I'm your host, John Muir Laws, and today I'm here with my friends, family, and we are nature journaling together. Uh, Tide boy! Come on! Nature journaling together is a lot of fun. Start by a solo investigation. Everybody splits up. With everybody out on their own, you have more chances of finding crazy things. Once you've had a chance to investigate on your own for a bit, Get together with one or two friends and start to share with each other your best finds. As you explore together as a group, use your I notice, I wonder, and it reminds me of prompts. When you come up with interesting questions, use your let's see and could it be skills to come up with possible plausible explanations for what you're seeing. Ask yourself, how does this work? Ask yourself, what's going on here? Why is this like this? Why is that like that? When did this happen? See if you can figure out any of these sorts of puzzles just by your own direct observations. After you've had some time to investigate together, sit down with your own journal near the phenomenon that is the most interesting to you. Use your words, pictures, and numbers to document and describe that phenomenon as best you can on your piece of paper. Show the features that to you are the most interesting. Ask the questions that are burning in your head. One of the really wonderful aspects of nature journaling with some friends is that you can all be in the same place, but each of you will be drawn to a slightly different phenomenon you'll be each looking at the same experience, but through a different lens. And then you'll be able to come together and share all of those experiences together. After everybody's had a chance to explore and document their favorite phenomenon in their own journals, come back together as a group and share your journal entries, your discoveries, and the mysteries that you have uncovered. Uh, so I did a little small landscape of the pool itself and then a little arrow from where the, the sea urchins were um, to kind of give them some place. I'm going to add color to this later. Um, they're so bright purple, which is kind of cool. I would have expected them to be more dull, um, but they're really, really bright. Um, so yeah, I was, I, was, I was wondering, like, how many spines do they have? And, like, are they in patterns or, like, what's going on here? That was, that was kind of my thought process here. How many questions did you ask? Um, on this page, I have 23 different questions. Notice the ways that other people have recorded their observations in their journals. Look for ideas that you weren't using. Is somebody else perhaps describing a phenomena using a trick or a technique that you could also use in your journal to make your investigations more clear? Oh, you use your fists to measure. Cool. As you look at each other's pages, point out strategies that you see your friends doing that you find particularly effective, especially those things that you might want to incorporate into your own nature journaling practice. So you see somebody describing perhaps a cross section or an alternate view of an object in a way that might not have occurred to you. Point that out to them. That'll both reinforce it to them that, hey, that's a good idea, you should do that again. It's also gonna make it more likely that you'll remember that strategy and be able to incorporate it into your own nature journaling practice the next time you're out in the field. Relative sense of how big that is. Making a key like this is a really useful strategy for um, recording information in a complex place. Well, what, is, what are your uh, next steps going to be on this? Together, we have the advantage of being able to 
notice the things that other people see. Each of us observe different sorts of things here in this time pool. And in addition to that, the way we recorded it in our journal was different. So you really got into the It Reminds Me of. It did a close-up of textures. You were zooming in and zooming out and really pushing the questions. You were using diagramming to show the details of a single tide pool. So each of us kind of has a different strategy. And so what you can do is look at, like, oh, she had some useful strategies that I could use, right? You can look at, like, oh, I might take that idea from her journal, right? I'm going to see if I can get more questions into mine. How can I use and it reminds me of? So we can take ideas that other people are using, and that really helps us when we look at other people's observations and other people's journaling techniques. That helps us be able to become better journalists ourselves. Let yourself be motivated and inspired by looking at the pages of somebody else's journal and taking their best ideas and incorporating them into your own game. Amelia created these two pages at the San Francisco Zoo one day after going tide pooling with her friend Fiona. Fiona's journal was filled with questions and question marks. Notice how that inspiration has taken hold on these pages. Let yourself be changed and influenced by the work of others, and your own nature journaling will improve and improve. Your nature journaling challenge this week is to try exploring an area with friends, family, or classmates. Begin by a solo exploration where you get to go around on your own and see what you can find. What are the most interesting discoveries that you can make? Then collect in groups of two or three, perhaps more, and together, go back and revisit all of your best discoveries. As you do this, use the process of I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of to explore any phenomenon more deeply. Then, out of all the things you've seen, choose the one that is the most interesting to you. This could be something that you discovered or that was discovered by one of your friends. And in your journal, document it as richly as you can using your words, pictures, and numbers. Come up with possible explanations for phenomena that you observe. How much can you figure out? Get it all down on paper. Then, get back together with all of your classmates, family, or friends, and share your observations and discoveries. Pay particular attention to the way that your friends may have documented or recorded observations in their journals that are different than strategies that you might have used. The next time you're out on your own, you can use those ideas as well. Like the practice of science, nature journaling can be a team sport. We can learn a lot from each other, share our observations, ideas, strategies, and insights. And together, that makes us better journalers and better observers. And until next time, this is your Nature Journal Connection.